Hello and welcome to the Chamber's Two Minute Drill. It's been a little while since we've talked to you, but we've been working remotely. Hopefully everybody's staying safe. Uh, but there's still an awful lot of work to be done, as we all know. So we wanted to go ahead and give you an update on what the Illinois Chamber has uh, been working on and what issues we think you should be aware of and preparing for moving forward. So this is probably going to be a five minute drill, uh, but let me go ahead and tell you what we want to go ahead and cover. First of all, as the legislature, they're clearly not in town. We don't know when they're going to come back, so we'll talk about that. We also want to talk about, obviously, the COVID assistance, which is where we've been spending an awful lot of time, uh, and we'll come back to that. Uh, the COVID response, what we're calling the three R's, which is responsible reopening and rehiring. We'll come back to that. Workers' compensation is a huge issue right now because the governor has rolled out a rule that is incredibly onerous, and uh, we need to talk about that. And then finally, taxes are in our near future. Uh, uh, the governor's already talking about the need for the progressive tax, which we've talked about quite a bit, and other taxes are going to be on the table. There's no doubt about it. So let's go ahead and go back to the legislature. When are they going to return? When are they going to come back to work? There's a lot of rumors out there. A lot of people are saying that uh, it's going to be veto session. They'll go the entire summer without being in, uh, without a budget. We've unfortunately experienced uh, going without a budget. That's one rumor that's out there. The other is coming back in July. Uh, just let the uh, <clears throat> uh, pandemic play out a little bit longer and then pre bring people back. I personally think that the legislature is going to have uh, real trouble going past June uh, without returning. We've got first responders out there uh, on the front lines doing their jobs and the notion that the legislature can't come back in a safe way, in a responsible way, for at least two uh, days to go ahead and get a budget passed and other really important legislation like Medicaid uh, expansion. Uh, that is really, really important. I think the legislature is going to come back in late May or June to go ahead and get some work done. So let's go ahead and talk about the COVID response assistance. This is where we've really go ahead, we've put a lot of effort in. Uh, when we looked at all the things that the chamber could be doing, we thought that small business liquidity was the single most important thing that we needed to help on. So consequently, we partnered with some really, really good uh, groups. Uh, the Illinois Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity, Small Business Administration, the U.S. Chamber is doing great work, as is the Illinois Treasurer's Office. So we have had multiple, multiple meetings with them, uh, talking to thousands of businesses about how they can go ahead and access uh, the programs that are out there, and uh, it's been very, very good cooperation. Federal assistance to critical industries has also been important. Those are the larger industries, uh, but aerospace, transportation, those have been very, very important uh, to the Illinois economy, and we're very happy that at least we're getting some movement there to go ahead and get those critical industries uh, some assistance out of the federal government, so uh, also on our priority list. Let's go ahead and talk about our three R's. We believe that the time has come to go ahead and rebalance uh, the debate, or not debate, the discussion about uh, the fact that we've got a uh, public health uh, emergency, but we also have an economic emergency. So we are talking about the three R's to go ahead and make sure that the economic problems are getting more attention from our state government as well as the federal government. So the first one is responsible. Most important, we know it's a public health emergency, but we believe that Businesses can reopen if they are to go ahead and use density control, appropriate masking, and cleaning protocols. We think the governor could go ahead and modify his executive order tomorrow along these guidelines. Restaurants and bars may need additional things, such as not uh, having paper menus, not having condiments on the tables. Uh, but we think that every business in Illinois that adheres to density control, masking, and cleaning should be uh, available to reopen and then most importantly, rehire our workers. 22 million Americans, uh, unemployment insurance claims, 
450,000 Illinoisans have done new unemployment insurance claims. Uh, those are staggering numbers. They really call for a new approach to go ahead and address the economic crisis. Workers' compensation, uh, we talked about, again, this is a new rule that came out. What the rule essentially does is says that anybody that is an essential business that is allowed to be open is going to face a huge workers' comp liability because anyone who claims any kind of COVID symptoms will automatically be allowed to go straight into the workers' compensation system. Huge expansion uh, of workers' compensation and potentially incredibly huge costs. One estimate we've got from a member business is that in California, who has a similar uh, rule on the books, that it could be an $11 billion increase in California. That's 61% of the total cost of last year's workers' compensation system last, uh, in California. 61% increase. It's one estimate, but it tells you how important this rule is. We are awaiting maybe some legal um, uh, action on this. Uh, we're going to weigh in in lots of different ways, but this workers' compensation rule is huge for everyone uh, in the system. Finally, let me go ahead and finish up with taxes. Uh, this is uh, going to be right around the corner. It's already being discussed. The governor has talked about his uh, progressive tax and how it's needed now more than ever. We, of course, think that this is a hammer blow on small businesses that have already seen this devastating impact of the economic crisis. So just so you know, the governor is talking about $2.7 billion budget uh, shortfall in 2020, $4.6 billion in 2021. So that's uh, well over $7 billion that the state government is talking about that they've got to go ahead and fill. As of this morning, when we're filming this, this the, the latest federal bill has no assistance for state and federal uh, governments. Uh, we all know back in the Great uh, Recession, the financial crisis, state and federal, uh, I'm sorry, state and municipal governments got a lot of assistance. Right now, it's at zero. So I think they're going to come back and the state's going to get some help. But <clears throat> if this uh, number is not addressed, you can know that every single taxpayer should be very, very concerned about what taxes are likely to come their way. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so the final thing is also we want to make sure that all of the federal assistance that businesses are getting and depending upon should not be taxed at the state level. We don't think that that's going to happen automatically, but we do um, uh, express some concern that if a lot of assistance and loan forgiveness is uh, coming to businesses, that the state will say, you know what, that's a real good source of income. This is uh, assistance from the federal government that's keeping people afloat, keeping people from going bankrupt. We don't think that the state government should come back and then tax that on top of it. So uh, we're very, very concerned about that issue as well. We'll be back in touch soon.